take a look at Mayev again to look at some of the abilities. For 10,000 years, Mayev's Shadow Song served as Illidan's jailer, pursuing him across Azeroth and Outland until she defeated him at the Black Temple. But the hunt had changed her. Unable to rejoin Night Elf society, Mayev reunited with her fellow wardens to continue her eternal watch. Fortunately for her, the Nexus has no shortage of dangerous menaces in need of imprisonment or execution. Let the hunt begin. Maiev is a melee assassin who excels at expertly dodging her enemies' attacks while preventing their escape. So her weakness is self-sustain and single target damage. She was pretty good at single target damage in Warcraft 3 with Shadow Strike, but it looks like they specced here more for area of effect damage. Multi-hero damage, escape and engagement. And we saw this a little bit looking at the video. Uh, Self-sustained she doesn't have, so people are wondering, can she be a solo laner? I don't know her full kit yet. I mean, I know her kit, but not her full talent tree. But without self-sustained, solo lane is generally not ideal. Greymain can solo lane. But he needs to win so definitively that all globes are for him. For example, Greymane against Sonya can win the solo lane. But if he ever takes poke damage from a ganker, he's effectively useless in lane because no self-heal. This is why generally solo laners are people like Thrall, Leoric, and Malthiel, you know, with self-heal, Sonya. So that, that removes that from her. She's an assassin, melee if I'm not mistaken, and that means that she will take the spot that usually a Kerrigan might have, a Zeratul might have, a Nova, you know, like a... She doesn't have Cloak, but she's a damage dealer from close quarters with mobility. So it's kind of like the bruiser in your four-man. If indeed the map lends itself to a one and a four-man. They say she's anti-dive, which we'll see later in the video as well. So that will play a part as well. If she's well balanced, her role will be to stop heroes like Genji, Tracer, maybe Illidan. And also to provide extra control. Now extra control and damage is always nice when you have someone like Johanna as your tank. Johanna is very independent, a great defensive one, a great defensive uh, hero warrior. And it looks like Warden might be able to make some solo plays and add a bit of extra damage. And with the extra control, this is something Johanna is lacking. So the the moments that I take Junkrat might be where I take Warden as well. Let's look a little bit more at the video. Maiev's trait, Vault of the Wardens, allows her to vault into the air, becoming temporarily immune to damage and unable... So that's her trait, and it looks like it's a short invincibility period. ...able to be hit by area of effect attacks. With the right timing, she can bait her enemies into wasting powerful abilities. Fan of Knives is Maiev's first offensive ability. She throws out several knives in a crescent pattern, hitting all enemies in the targeted area. If she hits at least two enemy heroes, the ability's cooldown is drastically reduced, allowing her to make sure... Okay, so Zeratul's Cleave is, has a talent where if you hit multiple heroes, like two, you get the CDR. I believe this is a level 16 talent. It looks like her fan of knives works a little bit differently, but has that baked into its basic kit. ...work of clustered enemies. Maiev's second ability is Umbral Bind. When activated... So a rubber binding ability that if someone goes out of its range, they get pulled in. A little bit like Butcher's Lamb to the Slaughter. ...in Maiev's next basic attack... And it looks like it affects multiple enemy heroes. ...becomes a large cleave. All enemy heroes hit by the attack are tethered to Maiev for a few seconds. If a tethered hero strays too far, they are instantly pulled towards her. Humble Bind can prevent enemies from escaping or pull them into a deadly situation. Spirit of Vengeance doubles as an attack and a movement ability. Maiev sends out a shadow of herself in the target direction, damaging all enemies it hits. I think that's part of her base kit, that it sends the shadow back and forth. Upon reaching its destination, the shadow pauses for a moment, then travels back to the point where the ability was... Okay, so it's a little bit like Leoric's Wraithwalk, except it always returns to its location, and you're not controlling it. It is traveling its own path, and you can choose whether or not you want to teleport to it at any port, at any part along its trajectory. ...cast. While the shadow is active, 
this ability changes to Blink, which Maiev can activate to teleport to her shadow's current location, giving her an effective tool for engaging and escaping. So you see that she got rooted by the Nova of Kjalthizad, but then used the teleport to uh, disjoint the root and avoid the, uh, the, the, the ultimate. Maiev's first heroic ability is Containment Disc. Maiev throws a glaive in the target direction, hitting the first... So pretty funny touch there that they have that uh, cast on Illidan. Uh, if you haven't followed the lore, she imprisoned Maiev's Illidan. Maiev's first heroic ability is Containment Disc. Maiev throws a glaive in the target direction, hitting the first enemy hero in its path. So that's a skill shot that can be blocked by uh, warriors that would like to save someone else. A skill shot projectile that impacts on first enemy hero and then puts them in stasis for a short time afterward Maev can re so this looks like about four seconds activate this ability to temporarily place the enemy hero in time stop and remove their vision taking out a critical member of the enemy team at the right time can turn the tide of battle Warden's Cage offers Maiev an additional way to rein in several enemies at once. When activated, a ring of Warden avatars surrounds her location. Once they activate, they push any enemy heroes who get too close to them to the center of the ring. Each avatar created by Warden's Cage disappears once it comes in. So if you look at this, you can see that the Warden is the graphical blocker uh, of uh, movement. But if you look at the lines here, it is a full circle and then when something goes away it shows very clearly where you can safely walk and where you cannot safely walk so graphically i think that's pretty well done it looks fantastic this heroic contact so that's pretty clearly done i like it a lot hero creating a gap in the ring and an avenue of escape for the enemy team creative use of warden's cage can greatly restrict the enemy team's movement and force encounters that they would rather avoid Maiev is at her most effective when the enemy team is clumped together. Watch for moments when you can capitalize on your enemy's positioning and use her trait to dodge their counterattacks. Maiev is particularly strong against high mobility heroes like Genji. Team up with heroes who have area-based CC like My Malfurion staff. and ETC to take full advantage of Maiev's strengths. When playing against Maiev, wait until she uses Vault of the Wardens to unleash your heavy hitting attacks. Remember to keep your distance from your teammates to prevent her from tethering you all together and punishing you with Fan of Knives. Heroes who can evade incoming attacks or become unstoppable, such as Sylvanas with her Haunting Wave, can ignore the effects of Maiev's Umbral Bind and cause her to waste it. There are some great combo potentials with Maiev tethering a Diva Mech Explosion to herself and then not being able to let it go and rubber banding the diva mech explosion into the entire allied team blowing them up for a quintuple kill which makes me wonder can you as Mayev cancel the umbral bind tether i don't know about that can you press it again to cancel it it's a it's a curious one you get tethered to Mayev, stay within range of her to avoid being pulled at level 1, the Naisha's Memento talent causes Maiev's basic attacks to bounce to nearby enemies when activated. Naisha's Memento has no cooldown, but can only be recharged by hitting multiple enemy heroes with Fan of Knives. At level 20, Maiev can choose one of... Activate to reset Spirits of Venge... Veginas. <laughs> Veginace. Uh, activate to reset Spirits of Vengeance cooldown. And that's, of course, her trait, which is... It is her trait, right? Wait. Yeah, it's her trait. So she can do more juking. Activate... Hey, there's no standard ultimate upgrades. All actives. A Shadow Orb Huntress. Activate to increase movement speed and attack speed by 40% for 5 seconds. Shadow Orb Huntress can be used again after dealing physical damage to enemy heroes 10 times. Oh, the trait is Vault and E is Shadow Vengeance. Ah. Oh. I see. I see. Uh, activate to slow and reduce armor. Three Shadow Orb talents that also give her new active. Deal 164 damage to an enemy. 
slow them 30%, reduce their armor by Hanzo's amount, by 20 armor for 4 seconds. Shadow Orb, Shadow Strike can be used again after dealing spell damage to heroes 10 times. Very little damage, slow, mediocre, and armor debuff, not bad, and can be comboed, of course. Yeah, I did draft in the meantime, were you not? I went Malthael on Battlefield of Eternity. Um, okay. Debatable abilities. Vengeance resets the cooldown on Spirit of Vengeance. Huntress increases Maev's attack and movement speeds, and Shadow Strike reduces an enemy hero's movement speed and armor. Like Nysha's Memento, these abilities also have no cooldown and are recharged by meeting specific requirements. Maiev is an unrelenting avatar of- All right, Spirit of Vengeance is the, the double dash. I mean, the, yeah, the damage dealing spell that you can blink to. Vengeance and a hunter who always catches her prey. Prevent your enemies from escaping and bring them to justice. Make sure to leave us a comment or subscribe to Heroes of the Storm around the web and we'll see you in the Nexus. Yeah, I think she'll be pretty good with uh, something like Johanna, uh, who has some damage mitigation that allows her to do her thing more. When you look at uh, certain melee assassins, they have trouble engaging without um, the main tank setting up big disruption. But she seems pretty independent. Pretty cool. It's going to be fun. Alternate skin looks pretty badass as well, yeah. She doesn't seem great with the tank like Stitches. Because she doesn't have a lot of single target bursts from the looks of it. Exactly, Johanna is perfect for grouping the enemy up for lots of fan of knife procs. 